Hey guys, this is my series on optimization problems. This is my third example, a cylinder, um, a cylinder in a right circular cone. The way my videos work, you want to pause and try parts of the example when you're prompted. And there are always free guided notes available at DividingConquerMath.com. And hey, while you're here, maybe you could consider liking my video or subscribing to my channel. That super helps me with providing free math on the internet. Okay, so let's get into it. Find the dimensions of the largest right circular cylinder of greatest volume that can be inscribed in a right circular cone of uh, radius R and height H. Okay, so there's there's a whole lot going on in this tiny little sentence. <laughs> so first things first, I want you to read the problem over. Make sure you understand what it's trying to ask. So try to draw a picture. That's always the first thing you want to do with optimization problems. So pause the video and draw a picture when you're ready uh, and hit play when you're ready. Okay, so I always get really nervous about drawing pictures. So I just want you to know that while I'm doing this, I think my heart's like beating a little bit faster. I don't know why drawing pictures is always like very unnerving. Okay, so there's my right circular cone. And I have to now draw this right circular cylinder inside of it. So I guess if I were thinking about this, so there's the top. And then, so it's like having a soup can in a cone here. Okay, so there's there's kind of the idea behind this. So I want to figure out what's the biggest one that I can have inscribed here. This is what inscribed means. By the way, it's putting, putting one inside the other. And um, I need to have radius R and height H. That's the, the radius and height of this cone. So that's like as general as we could possibly be, right? So from here, so maybe just to make this nice and clear, from here to here, so this is R. And then from here up, so this is H. So we're dealing with very, very, like, plain language here. Okay, so I want to just tell you guys for reference before we, we get this party started, just what are the, the, the formulas for area, uh, for volume. So maybe I'll just write those here. So these are the formulas for volume of a right circular cylinder and a right circular cone. So notice I'm, I'm using lowercase letters. So these are just the general formulas, okay? This is actually an important distinction because part of what makes this problem confusing is that it's using R and H. So this R and H, this is a specific R and H versus these formulas are referring just to the idea in general. So you, you need to probably just know these so that we can kind of keep going with this. Now the issue here is that we have to kind of figure out really what is the, the volume of this thing here, but we have some constraints. So a lot of times with optimization problems, you when you have one object inside another, you, you need to figure out how to kind of constrain them. And the issue here is just everything's so, so general. So in looking at this picture, so I want you just to look, maybe I'll make it a little darker here. So look at kind of the height and the radius. And I want you just to notice the shape that kind of gets made from this. What shape do you see here? Well, if I go straight from the top of the cone all the way down and over, this would actually create a triangle, right? So I can, I can kind of add this piece here. So this gives me a triangle. Okay, so this is really good to know, actually, and I'm going to draw this shape one more time. Okay, so here's one triangle, and the other thing I want to notice here so I'll use a, a pink color. So going from like here to here, I get another right triangle. So that's something to kind of notice here. And, and the reason I point those things out is because you have to find some way to optimize the, the volume of this right circular cylinder. And to do that, we need to have some way to bring in the R and the H from the large cone here. And as, as it stands, 
we don't even really see any way to maybe relate this this cylinder to this cone. So this is helping us to kind of figure out how are these two objects related. And we see this from this triangle here. So there's one other thing I want to do now. Um, I want to go ahead and label this cylinder to make my life a little bit easier. So we're just going to give it some general letters. So the height of the cylinder, we're going to call this a height of Y. And then the radius of this cylinder, we're going to call this X. So big R and big H refer to now the cone and X and Y refer to the cylinder. So they both have a height and a radius, right? So we need some way to kind of distinguish those two things. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to do is I want to figure out how do I relate these two triangles to one another? So I've got really the, the base and the height, those are kind of related. So the height of this is H over R. So there's the, maybe the, the height to the base, so we can relate it to this. And how can I relate this triangle to this other one? Well, you know what the height of this triangle is, right? The height of this triangle is still just Y. And then how would you get to what the base of this triangle is? Well, this might seem a little bit tricky, but notice, right, so if I go from here to here, this would all be R, right? But I don't have R. What I have is R. I, I want to get to just this little piece here. So if I'm calling this part here the radius of my, my cylinder, to get to this piece here, this piece here, this is really r minus x. So that's going to be the other part of this. So this is big R minus x. So why do I care about this? Why do I, why do I need to see this? So maybe I should now also remind you of just the, the volume formula. So remember, the volume, which we're trying to maximize, so the, the volume of our cylinder is going to be found in by this general formula pi r squared h and the issue is so if i now convert that to the language i've created here so instead of having r squared and h i'm now going to call this my r we said here it was x and then my h here is y so the issue here is if i try to take the derivative of this i i can't right like because what do i take the derivative with respect to with respect to x or with respect to y you you can only take the derivative with respect to one letter so what you really need to do here is you need some way to write one of these two letters in terms of the others. So now that I have this little guy here, this is actually going to help me kind of boil this whole thing down. So I can solve this thing for y. So maybe pause for a second, review the strategy, solve this thing for y, hit play when, when you're ready, and, and rewatch any parts of the video if you, if you need an explanation again. I think this definitely takes a moment to wrap your head around. Okay, so this guy here, if I rewrite this and solve it for y, I get y equals h times r minus x, all of this over r. Now, let's go ahead and make some replacements here, and then I, I want to just clarify a few things for you guys. So I've got pi x squared, now I'm going to replace it with this new y. So this is h, uh, when I just distribute that h, this is hr minus hx, all of this over r for now. Okay, so now I can hear probably a, a natural question of, well, how, how can I take the derivative of this? Because we still have more letters in this, right? So one thing that's kind of tricky about this is you're trying to remember, how do you think of h and r? Are H and R really something that we're we're treating as like I I I'm going to plug in numbers into this? No, we're thinking of actually H and R just as you, you treat them like numbers. So if I treat H and R as a number, then really I've boiled this whole thing down so that I I can just optimize around the x. So that's kind of the idea that we were going for. And now I have at least a a problem that's in terms of x, and I can think of all the other pieces of this as just we can treat them as numbers. So let me give myself some space and, and kind of write out what we're doing now. So here's what I have. I want to distribute 
the x squared in. Actually, let, let's try to clean this up as much as we possibly can. So let's go ahead and just, um, maybe we can distribute this. So this becomes pi hr over r times x squared minus pi h over r times x cubed. And now you can see from this right that um, these r's here, these r's actually cancel out. So in this little cluster here, I can I can rewrite this whole thing as not pi h r over r, but instead I'll just write it as pi h because the r's cancel out. So this is pi h. Okay, so I want you to notice how I've written this. So I wrote this so that the stuff I want to treat is constants. I just have it sitting in the front of this and I'm just going to kind of take my derivatives around the rest of this. This I can optimize. This I can take a derivative of. I can take the derivative with respect to x. I can treat h and r as, um, I can treat them as constants. So now what I want you to do is I want you to actually try to maximize this. So take the derivative, um, you know, think about the domain, um, set it equal to zero, all this stuff. See if you can finish the problem from here. Hit play when you're ready. Okay, so let's go ahead and take the derivative. So this is gonna be, let's see, two pi h x minus three pi h over r times x squared. And so if I wanna set this equal to zero, uh, I totally can. So this is two pi h x minus three pi h over r times x squared. And then I can see by looking at this, I can I can actually factor this down a little bit and make this nicer. So this becomes pi h x times two minus three over r times x equals zero. So then the two places where this will equal zero will either be at zero itself, or if you solve this out, so you'll get, so your two critical points are x equals zero, or x will equal um, 2 over 3 over r, which if you simplify that, this becomes 2r over 3. So these are your two critical points. So I'll, I'll just put little squares around them. Okay, so now the, the thing that you have to consider with optimization problems is the domain. So now we have to actually consider that. So let's just note what the domain is. So of course x has to be something bigger than zero, but x cannot exceed what? So now we have to go back to the picture. So here's where my x came from, right? The x is coming from the cylinder, but this is being inscribed in this right circular cone. So the largest x could be would be really the length of whatever this radius is. So x cannot exceed the um, x cannot exceed r. So the domain x has to be somewhere between zero and r. And so you can tell just by looking at this, right, that if you plug zero in, that's gonna make your whole volume equation equal zero. So that's obviously not gonna be the maximum. Therefore, the maximum must be two r over three. And so now we've got kind of the x part of this, but what was the actual question? So find the dimensions. So now I have to say, what is this X and what is this Y? And I need to t answer what these are in terms of H and H and R. <laughs> so I know this is, this is a lot. So the dimensions are, so we've got part of the dimensions. So the dimensions for the cylinder R, so the, the radius is gonna be this thing that I found for X, right? So the, the radius is gonna be two R over three. So that's gonna be our, our maximized radius. And then for my Y, so for my height, so now we have to go back and remember what, what we actually set Y equal to. So Y we found from this little relationship over here so I now need to plug in the x that I found. I need to just plug it into this little equation here. So I'm gonna work all that out. So this becomes y equals h times r minus two thirds r, and then all of this was divided by r, which if you work all of that out, what you get is that the height is going to equal really just one over three h. 
So the maximum, the, the maximum size of a right circular cylinder that can be inscribed in this right circular cone, the maximum would have two thirds the size of the radius and one third the size of the height. So that, that would be it for this. So that wraps up this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And um, I have some other videos in this series. So thanks for watching, guys, and I hope I'll see you again.